In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning to all of you. Good morning. We also greet the people who follow us in the internet, participate to this Holy Eucharist. So we are invited to pray today for the eternal repose of Genalid Sinke Magpali Arnaldo. I will put a, a special intention to this Holy Mass because we have just celebrated the World Bible Sunday. And so today, Jesus gives us the parable of the sower. So I would ask the Lord for myself and for each one of you, for each one of us, we ask the Lord to be open to receive the message of his word, not to be people who have ears and do not hear, who have eyes and do not see, who have hands but do not touch. So let us ask the Lord this openness and eagerness to receive the message of the Word of God in our lives. Now let us ask forgiveness to the Lord in the beginning of this Holy Eucharist. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask a blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. We ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, has made perfect forever those who are being concentrated the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying this is the covenant I will establish with them after those days says the Lord I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them upon their minds he also says their sins and their evil doing I will remember no more where there is forgiveness of this, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. 
you are exist forever in the eyes of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the light of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord, will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the light of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the Jew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the light of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Please all rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him, so that he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on land, and he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his instruction, he said to them, Hear this, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and grew and yielded thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. He added, whoever has ears to hear, ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present with him, with the twelve, questioned him about the parables. He answered them, The mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside everything comes in parables, so that they may look and see, but not perceive, hear and listen, but not understand, in order that they may not be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower saws the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear, Satan comes at once and takes away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots. They last only for a time. 
Then, when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it, and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. My dear sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, we are starting a section in the gospel which is about the, parab the parables. So the parables are a very special way by which Jesus was teaching. And there is a dynamic between the parable and the understanding, but especially between the understanding and the putting into practice. Because what is the final purpose of the teaching? It is the fruit. Whether you are among thorns, or you are on the path, or you are on the good soil, in the end, what matters is the fruit that you produce. But in order to produce this fruit, you have to understand. The more you understand and are willing, the more fruit you will produce. The more salvation you will assure, the more glory you will give to God the Father. So, Jesus teaches in parables and this uh, way of teaching is beautiful because it attracts the attention of people because of the images, because of the concreteness of the teaching. The parables are short stories with a meaning. The beauty of the parables attracts the attention of people, even people who are closed in themselves. Like Prophet Isaiah complains, he says, they have eyes, but they do not, they do not see. They have ear, but they do not understand. They listen, but they do not understand. And so they are not converted. They are prejudiced against the truth. So their senses, their way of understanding, uh, is blocked by their prejudice. In order to unblock them, Jesus takes an indirect way, which is to attract the attention with the beauty of the parable. I give you, uh, uh, to explain this dynamics, I remind you of a, a small episode which is in the Gospel. Jesus was preaching, he was preaching so well, he was so handsome and young and clever and attractive that a woman cried from the crowd, blessed is the womb that bore you and blessed are the breasts that fed you. Meaning, blessed is your mother because you are so blessed. So, the way the woman expressed her joy is a kind of parable.
But what did the Jesus say? More blessed are those who listen to the word of God and put it into practice. Uh, so this makes us understand what is the final aim of the parables. People were uh, absent-minded, unready to listen, distracted by many interests. They have eyes, they see, but they do not understand. So he attacks them with the beauty of the parable. They are attracted by the story, and then they will embrace the meaning. And possibly, they will put it into practice. So that is the dynamic of the parables. And the greatest, one of the most beautiful parables, the, it is the conclusion of the speech of the mountains, which is the programmatic teaching of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, from chapter 5 to the end of chapter 7. You remember what Jesus says? You already had said, not those who say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of the Father. So he said that the one who listens to the word of God, but does not put it into practice, is like a foolish person who builds his house on sand. Then the bagyo comes, the wind blows, the tsunami brings the water and the house collapses because there were no foundations and etc. as you know the story. So here we are, Jesus teaches us in parables to attract our uh, wandering attention, to make us more ready to appreciate the beauty of his teaching, to induce us, possibly, to make the, cho the right choice and to put his words into practice. We have another small episode in the Gospel which is very beautiful. Uh, Jesus was preaching again and uh, Mama Mary comes with his uh, relatives to see him. And so they are arriving from the outside of the crowd. And so they tell Jesus, your mother is here. Your brothers, your sisters are here. And Jesus speaks to the crowd and says, who is my mother? Who are my brothers? who are my sisters, those who listen to the word of God and put them into practice. Those are my real, the real members of my new family because the love of God is more powerful than the ties of blood. That is what makes us members of one family the new family of God. It is our commitment to put into practice the message of the Lord, which we have received, especially through the Word of God, the written Word of God, the Bible. So the World Sunday, Bible Sunday, uh, invites us to appreciate the message of the Word of God in the Book of God, especially by committing ourselves to bear fruits, to put it into practice, so that the effort the Lord makes and His kindness in dressing up His teaching in beautiful parables is not for nothing. It acquires the meaning for which it has been made. So, Jesus teaching in parables 
makes us understand also that this message is close to our life. It is not something in theory, it is close to our life. It is an invitation to enter into this new life, life of love, which is the essence of his gospel, the good news. So this is my reflection. There is anyway a mystery between the announcement of the word of God and the response, the free response of the human being. This mystery uh, is in the hands of God. That's why we pray. Uh, we pray that the grace of the Holy Spirit may make us doers of the world. Amen. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all His creatures. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you create the human race, so also through him <coughs> with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the Redeemer praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, 
so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all God's people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and with all the saints, we please you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coheres to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer this peace to one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, only, only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and the blood of Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to a new life, 
we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.